Oh, I understand that, but it's also very difficult to stand at your spot on the field and understand, okay, this music sounds great to me. It sounds like my part is matching up perfectly with the rest of the band, when in fact it's not. If it sounds right to you on the field, nine times out of ten, it's going to be wrong by the time it hits the audience. So we're, we're going to kind of give a little bit of a demonstration here, uh, going off of sound and then also off of what, you, what we typically do, which is just conducting. This is why... Most drum majors don't yell one, two, three, four, play type of thing. So what we're first going to do is start it with Brock. What's going to happen is the sound is going to travel. His stick clicks is for when they're supposed to start playing. It has to travel back to Tommy, and then the sound of that him hitting his drum has to travel back up to us. So this is what would happen if you were on the field listening to the front ensemble as to what you should be playing and when you should be playing. So Brock will actually start it. Good. That's the sound we get. Again. All right. Now, if we were to start it, if, if the drum major was to start it, guys, close your close your eyes. I've got it, bro. If they're gonna listen to to the drum major, and the drum drum major was to give um, was to give an audible command to start it. Okay, it gets spaced out even further. Obviously, not a good, not a good sound. Now, the fact of the matter is, Tommy and everybody on the soccer field right now thinks that sounded perfect because that sound, as it traveled back to him, he latched on to that. So everybody on the soccer field heard one note, chop. So if you're in the back and you are listening up to the pit, you're going to be wrong. This is what the audience hears. This is now obviously the band is not made up of these uh, different segments and different sections that make these staccato notes of pop pop that a snare drum makes. Obviously, it's it's um, the um, the sound is going to be different, and it's it's going to be more spaced out. But if we change it now, and we have Eric started, Eric and Brock are going to be playing the exact same note. So instead of us hearing three notes, we're probably just going to hear two. Close your eyes again, guys. And Eric, you started. All right, Brock and Eric should be together. Tommy's is going to be slightly behind that. Again. Did right here that it wasn't together. Off. All right, now if we switch it to Tommy, everything should piece together correctly. All right, Tommy. Again. The idea is that if you listen back and you, you attach yourself onto that sound, as it comes forward, it's going to be correct. So when we're standing up in the press box or when Mr. Summers and Mr. Brown are sitting in the press box and they're saying, you're off, it's, they're, not, they're really not picking on you. It's because when they hear the sound coming across, even if you're standing over here on the 30 and you think it sounds perfect, like when you tap your, feet, your foot to the uh, music or something or you're playing along with something on the radio, it could sound perfect to you, but it's not going to sound right when it hits the audience. And that's what we're aiming for. Going a little bit past that, what we do, um, conducting. Now, obviously, if I was to conduct four beats for them, it's going to still be slightly off because all three of them are going to hit the drum at the exact same time. But the sound difference between Tommy getting up here should be slightly off from the rest. All right, one big flam. That's not what we want. Now, that's not to say, I don't want you guys to overanalyze this and say, oh, but I'm, I'm standing at this particular point, so I need to be playing.